Room service. Oh, you are not Mickey. Oh, uh, you want Mickey? <laughs> Here. <laughs> well, you just got on the camera. <laughs> What's happening, man? Mickey. Spencer. Nice to meet you. Man. Nice to meet you. Lifestyles of the rich and the soon to be famous, huh? <laughs> Last Friday, I released a video about this guy, Mickey, who started popping up on my radar. An interview with Adam, gambling, women, walking through casinos with millions in cash. Who is this guy? You flirting with my girl? No, I'm just kidding. All right, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can, I don't know, I don't know if I fit into this lifestyle, man. <laughs> this is wild. The video starts taking off. 50,000 views, 100,000 views, 150,000 views. I was skeptical of this guy who claims to win millions in Baccarat to go along with a story that is an Aaron Sorkin script and David Fincher direction away from being a box office hit. A day later, my phone buzzes. A friend texts me. Mickey hit me and wants to talk if you're open to it. And, and I knew you didn't know all the information, which is why I reached out and said, hey, let me let me just give you some more information. If you still feel my fraud, then please let the world know. Since we were both in Vegas, we decided to make a video talking through all of my doubts about his life. Make sure to watch the full video. Enjoy. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I made a lot of claims in the first video. You ready to answer them? He's going to be super honest with us, and I very much appreciate it. So we got a first start on your Instagram. You're talking about the ability to make people money gambling, which I've made a lot of videos about gambling. A lot of these gamblers are losing money, but you're going to help people make money gambling. Is it true? So it's true. But to be honest with you, I hate playing for other people. Um, I would like uh, avoid it at all costs if I could. So what happened was like some of my friends that want to like just be around me, like let's say we're going to dinner or whatever, I, want, I feel like gambling. So they'll come with me. They're like, hey, can you teach me? Can you show me? So I'm making some of my friends money, right? But we're friends, it's just like what we're doing on a night out. I'm not going to be like, you guys have to go away, you know, and do your own thing after dinner. I'm going to play. So I started doing that and some of like my famous friends, you know, started posting about it. So I started getting exposure. So I started getting harassed online from like st all these strangers. Make me money, make me money, make me money. And the truth was there was like never enough, I, I, you'll never, it's really hard to stake me enough where I'm winning enough where it has such a positive influence on my life. So I'm really not making any, I'm not, I'm not making enough money doing it. It's so much pressure. What if I lose for like one of these people who gave me their last money, you know? Some people don't understand how gambling works. They just think I'm a money printing machine. So I really don't want to do it. But I was like, I'm getting exposure that I'm doing it for my famous friends. I'm getting all this harassment that I don't want to help the little guys. So I was like, you know what, screw it, man. If it helps them and it eases up on all my harassment, I'll just give an opportunity for me to allow strangers also to, to stake me. And yeah. that's the only reason I did it, but honestly, it's like, I'd, I would not do it if I could. A big reason why I made the first video was because it appeared that he was asking for people to stake him with his gambling. I felt it was appropriate to see if he was legitimate or not. While hanging with Mickey for a few hours, I never got the belief that he was raising all of this money and taking people's last dollar and hoping to help them get rich. My interpretation was that he took very few people's money and it usually was a celebrity or influencer with a large amount of cash. Yeah, I actually signed up for your form online. Did you see it? Mm -mm. This, okay. I don't check it myself. Oh, okay, yeah, I signed up because I wanted to see see if there were any disclosures. This was during the period where I was kind of like, I was aware of you and researching, and I was just curious if, like what type of terms there would be. Because gambling, I mean, I think you would agree, there's a chance of losing money. Of course, right? yeah, of course. And I think that we've even talked on the phone, you said that there's been times where you've won money, but then you lost money before that. Yeah, yeah. And so can you explain that? Like there's times when you're gonna lose money too? Yeah, so uh, if anybody were to ever say they win 100% of the time, we can just, we don't even have, you don't even have to do an expose video on them. We just, we already know what it is. You, yeah. you can't win 100%, right? But you can have like really high win rates. Uh, so I don't wanna say what percentage of mine is publicly, but, but, I, but I have one of the highest win rates of all time, which is what put me in this position, why I'm banned everywhere, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of times what happens is, uh, if the cars are not coming correctly immediately, it doesn't matter what math or what edge as a player I have or anything like that. Like if the cars are just not there, they're just not there. If I'm dealt uh, a 20 and the dealer has black uh, a blackjack, for example, there's no nothing I can do. Even if I could tell the future and have X-ray vision, there's no, other than bet small that hand. There's nothing I can do I could do to avoid losing that hand. Uh, if I could tell the future at that point, maybe I just open two hands to avoid the ace going to the dealer. But you understand what I'm saying. So what happens a lot of, not a lot of times, but some of the times is I will lose some. And as long as I stay on it and stay on the math, eventually the math catches on and we make it. So you need to have the bankroll there, which is also another reason it's hard for me to stake people. A lot of people want me to stake them with really small amounts of money, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks. And it's hard to explain to all of these people, hey, the, that's more dangerous than giving me 100,000, right? With 100,000, we have so much room for error before the math catches on and we win. So I naturally have a skeptical eye. That's kind of what helps me do what I do is I have to kind of see 
the people and I have to connect the dots where they're not connecting it because they have something to sell you, right? And so I always look at things with a skeptical eye. And so sometimes, yeah, it feels a little like staged almost. Like, oh, we're just showing up and, oh, we made money, 5K to 200K. Yeah, I think the next question that we all have is, you win millions, from my knowledge, you get banned or limited early. Mm -hmm. So how are you able to win millions, right? At some point, I feel like the casinos would know who you are. So they all know who I am. Um, most of my million, uh, multi-million dollar wins uh, came before I got banned, and the ones that come now after banned for a few reasons. One, there are certain casinos around the world that want to take a gamble on me. They're like, he has great exposure, the entire world is taking his advice. You know, all the celebrities are asking me on a daily basis, which casino is best for this game? Which hotel is best for this? Da 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 da. So they're like, you know, even if we lose a lot to Mickey, the amount of exposure and business we get by his famous friends and the rest of the gambling world uh, is worth it. Um, so now I make a lot of deals. Well, most of my deals are kind of over because even after making deals, I'm still winning and they're like, this is just not working. So generally, so right now in Vegas, I have uh, three casinos left that I'm allowed to gamble in. Um, only one of them am I allowed to stay in. And one of them I would not advise anybody gambles in. I've never seen a single winner, including myself, from this casino. I played there really small when they first opened just to feel them out. And it's like, I haven't seen a single person win. Oh, yeah. I have a video of him doing it, too. Um, but, yeah, no, I just shot with uh, Ricky. This is her on Brazzers. <laughs> oh, Lord. You have as many views as my entire YouTube channel. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's, it's an interesting life. Yeah. Uh, they're just willing to and you're willing to please them and then yeah you just you, it's fun it's just it's a it's a fun experience <laughs> that's all right I can on. say yeah from my side you have a few examples of people winning some money turning 5k into 100k well, I'm about to go buy real estate why wouldn't I just go to you and say let's go turn let's go flip five grand into 100 grand if it's so easy because that's Let's be real, that's kind of how it's presented in on social media. So it's easy for the staker, right? For you to just give me five grand, let me just show up 10 hours later with 500 grand. That's the easiest 495 grand you ever made. Sure. For me, it's really hard. Also, it's not a safe bet. I, if you look at my comments, I'm like, I discourage anybody who's like, you make me want to learn how to gamble. I'm like, you shouldn't do it. Most people are losers, it's really hard. And even if I'm, let's call it one of the best gamblers, let's just say, right? There's still a chance we lose, and I would never want to take you know, a roof away from your kid's head or your wife's head or your head. I'd never want to do that. What if you fall into that slim percentage of people that I lose for? You know, I, I just wouldn't want that. So you agreeing that there's, an, there's a chance that if I gave you, let's call it five grand, there's a chance we lose it. Well, especially before five making grand. 200 grand or whatever. Especially five grand, because five grand is such a shallow buy-in that yeah. it only takes a couple of losing hands and then also we're broke. Five grand you can lose in two seconds. Right. But let's say like let's say you gave me 500 grand and you wanted to turn it into a million at 1.5. Although we're probably a favor, we're likely to win. It's not 100. percent And what if you fall into that? Even no matter how slim of a category it is, if you fall into that category, I'm not. I feel personally responsible for why you don't own a house. Sure. And I don't really want this. It's not safe. If you wanted to do it, sure, I would do it. But we would definitely have a long talk like, hey, is this going to negatively impact your life? And if so, I'm saying, you know, it's, this is not the right investment for you. Yeah. I know one time you said something about Mike V's uh, body language. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you about Mike V. Right? He's just like an awkward guy. I love him to death, but he's just like not suave. You know what I mean? He's like always nervous and his, like... His speech sounded... Prepared. Uh, he preps himself because he's so nervous. You know what I mean? He, yeah. he, and we're like, hey man, just be yourself and just say whatever you want to say about the experience. He goes, retake it, retake it, retake it. You know, like, all right, man, you know, whatever you need. Part of my video is I'm trying to figure out where the source of these funds are. In my interpretation, I don't believe people win gambling long term. I'd be open to being proven wrong, but I'm so used to these sports gamblers that none of them are winning. And so my interpretation is that you all of a sudden have these millions. You also mentioned affluent family, so I'm just curious. I made a claim that you could have come from money, and so I'll give you a chance to explain whether that was right or wrong. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to log into some of my online live casino portals, and you're going to look at my oh, winnings. Wow. Is that from... Do you have an account here at the hotel that you can... I you don't need to bring in cash, basically? Well, so I don't do lines of credit. 
uh, when I was like younger back in the day I did the reason I don't is first I don't trust casinos to have any access to my money and second when you get a line of credit they're thoroughly investigating live and looking into your bank account they yeah. see who you're paying how much you're paying who's paying you what uh, it's not their business because there was a picture you posted on your Instagram that has I thought was an M life account for MGM and it was a cash out and so I interpreted that as you being a gambler on account I have uh, accounts with every casino, almost every casino in the world, and uh, so I could do lines of credit, but to be honest, I always, uh, it's called posting cash, putting money on deposit. So I'm going to do something I've never done before, and I'm going to show you live on the air uh, some of my casino Looking accounts. forward to it. So you can see my full name here. Yep. Right. I'm logged in. Do all those points get you a free night? <laughs> well, it did before I was banned, yeah. <laughs> that was when you were on their good side? Yeah. <laughs> Within one of the casino apps, he was able to pull up the year 2020 tax statements that showed his win and loss statement. The number on the screen I saw was profit. So that's from 2020. I'm letting you know this is yeah. nothing in comparison to what I did in that's 2021. That's fair. That's a very big number. And this is only from one casino. Do you want to buy real estate? <laughs> <laughs> I can help you buy some uh, some nice houses. <laughs> so, and, I, and you can see here, so just to be super sure, so win loss the loss is always in parentheses that's why they do that okay. and then clearly there's no parentheses yeah that's see, that's I, fascinating man like that's that's legit yeah. i just i man it's so hard to believe like as you can understand from an outside observer that you could i'm not going to say the number but it is a large number that the casinos are in business and you are winning. I've always been the type of person who's cool with getting proven wrong. I said in a video that he likely wasn't a winner in gambling and the source of his funds was somewhere else, but I think it's safe to assume that I was wrong. I watched him open the app, go to his tax statements for the year 2020, 2021 wasn't an option yet because the year isn't over, and pull up a statement showing large profit. I'm sure some people will watch and still not believe and that's totally cool, but from my perspective, he showed me he is a winner in the official casino app. I have to say he's legit. Yeah, and I was that same casino, and I could show you all of them, all of my casino yeah, yeah. online portals, but for that particular one, it's just uh, usually the most relevant because most of my videos come from there. But um, I was that company's biggest winner domestically four quarters in a row. I'm and sure they throw you a party, right? Look well, at all these guys with the secrets to beat us. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, so this one of my questions, and one thing I couldn't understand, assuming that you weren't a winner, assuming that you were losing, is I just got the sense that you had this vitriol for the casinos. You were very adamant about how much you dislike the casinos, and I couldn't understand. It's provided a life for you. I, I don't. I can't comprehend why you seem to have a very much uh, like an anger towards them. Yeah. Okay. So um, high stakes gambling, especially if you're a professional gambler, you can just assume it's what you do for a living, right? Whether I had money before or after is not relevant. And it's complete war. They'll do anything to see me broke, take food out of my son's mouth, keep a roof off of my head. They want to see me homeless, broke, and nothing. And they'll do anything to lie, cheat, steal, manipulate. They'll do anything to see me have no money and in pain. It's like going to war. I mean, in the realest of terms. And let's say uh, in World War II, right, the Nazis, the Germans lost the war. But to this day, we still hate Nazis. They already lost, right? But we still hate them. So these guys would did and still are doing anything they can to see me in pain, see me have no money and ruin my life by any means they can. Off camera, I asked Mickey for a favor. I told him the stories about the women and the orgies and the parties sounded ridiculous. And so I just wanted to see what his DMs look like. He said, let's turn on the cameras and see your reaction. So I'm super fascinated to see his DMs and he's actually gonna show me his DMs. I just wanna like tap into this life of partying and rappers and famous people hitting you up to come hang in Vegas. So this is another thing I've never done, but uh, you've been, Easy, so yeah, I'm gonna let you do it. So you can see here, obviously it's live, time, date, all this. I didn't open it, didn't edit anything, because you can see messages coming in. So here, just take my phone. You can go and that's my DMs there for Instagram. Look at whatever you Only like. Only 16, I thought you were cool and, and popular. No, it, it glitches, I don't know why. But you're welcome to open anything, you can see all the I'm girls. not gonna open it, go it's, ahead, it's just wild. Like when you said, I think we spoke on the phone about this, when uh, we were talking about some of the claims I made with like the girls, it's like, okay, come on man, you really Why mean all you, these. You you're like, open. dude, just, uh, just see my DMs, like all these girls hitting me up. These girls are all hitting you up. Yeah, yeah, I can tell by the the picture that they're they're nice looking. You're, I'm serious. You're welcome to open and see a lot of naked photos you yourself. Check out my on there. <laughs> <laughs> this is wild. That's nuts. It's just all blue checks and girls. Yeah, no, it's legit. This is pretty fascinating. No, I appreciate the transparency. I'm not gonna go on any of these. There's a lot of girls, man. How do you keep up? I really don't. It's kind of hard. That's why we do it in groups. Do athletes, is it true that athletes and celebrities have like people that help them with this? Where they like kind of manage? I mean, I do. Of, okay. I, I, I got I got my assistant that does it. Oh my God, need another wild night. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. 
If any of these girls had twin sisters, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm single. I'll just, I'll just give them to you when yeah, I'm yeah, done. Right. We can take them at the same time. Dude, there's an athlete. There's a famous athlete. That's pretty cool. No, this is super dope, man. Yeah, like part of the video, you said your words that you know you're winning, and then they show up, and the feds show up, and they're flipping, they're flipping your couches, and I'm like, something's not adding up here because I've, I'm not in the business that you're in, mm -hmm. and so this is from an ignorant perspective. But when I hear about the feds showing up and looking through your stuff, that doesn't sound like it's gambling. That sounds like it might be something more. So I want to talk exactly about that. You had said that in your first video, yes. right? And you said it was hard to believe. Yep. I want to give you the exact account. First of all, it was this hotel that did it, the one that we're sitting in right now. And he was in the room. Uh, th 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 those people weren't, but he was. And it was me, him, and uh, my brother, and one other friend. And none of the four of us were drinking or used drugs. It was four adult men. And we're in a very big room and had three floors in it. And it wasn't federal agents. It was, I misspoke, I guess, a little in the video, but what it actually was is, I meant to say, like the feds. So they brought 10 security guards that came in and said, hey, we have reports of unconscious women and drug dealing. And I'm thinking to myself, I have X amount of money in the safe of your casino chips. Why am I drug dealing, right? But I know what they're doing. They just wanted to stir the pot. They weren't looking for anything. There was, they knew there was nothing to be found. We, us four grown sober men, knew there was nothing to be found. So they brought 10 security guards in. They said, you guys gotta line up against the wall. They flipped the cushions. They flipped the mattresses over. They ripped every piece of clothing. They, anything they could as if they were the feds looking for a drug raid. And ultimately at the end they go, okay, we didn't find drugs or unconscious women. And I said, obviously. They said, all right, you're good to go. Then what they did was they used that as their reason to justify putting a security guard outside my door. So a woman, a security guard, 24 hours a day, well, I'm sure it wasn't the same woman, but there was a security guard they put in a chair sitting right outside my door. They wouldn't let anybody in or out of my own room, including myself, without showing ID. I believe the reason they were doing it is because I used to catch them breaking into my room all the time, which all the casinos do. So I think they were trying to track when is the room empty so we can go in and put recording devices, uh, video, audio, uh, jam, Wi-Fi. And I want to use the word jam, Wi-Fi loosely. I know nothing of like electronics. What I mean to say is, um, and I could prove it, believe me, is that when you're in a room that's under my name, you can't seem to get any reception with or without internet. And I believe I know why they do that. Uh, I don't know if that means jamming, blocking, I don't know, but that's what they're doing. They come in and, and one time this same casino also, they came in when all of us were out of the room and they untied every shoelace from every left pair of shoes in my entire villa. And you're gonna say, why would they do that? And the answer is, I don't know, except that to this day I'm talking and still thinking about it. And I think that's what they wanted. Quick side note, we had long conversations off camera, I interacted with his close friends, and Mickey was never uncomfortable with me prying into his life. I just want you to keep that in mind if you think my video is missing anything. All right, we gotta discuss the pharmacy stuff. I thought that was a really interesting story. You built up this business full of pharmacies. I did a quick Google search and it's like $450,000 to start a pharmacy. So either prove me wrong or maybe uh, shed some doubt. Sure. So there's roughly 12 types of pharmacies, and the one that you're probably referring to is like a CVS or a Walgreens. It's called a retail pharmacy. It's actually the least profitable. Hmm. Uh, so a successful month for a retail pharmacy, it would be breaking even, right? Hmm. Where you make all your money is on the rebates. So you, with all the manufacturers, and there's many to choose from, you make a deal with them. And you say, hey, if I sell X amount of your uh, pill, right, or your, your prescription, I want this many dollars back, like per, something like that. And that's where the profit's actually made. And that's a huge numbers game. You need huge, huge amount of patients. You need so many customers. And they also have the store and they're selling goods and things like that. That is not the type of pharmacy I owned. So um, out of the 12 pharmacies, that would be one of them. And that's the least profitable. The most profitable being a compound pharmacy. But there's tons of fraud. It's really questionable. And I actually, to be honest with you, I actually don't even know what the correct usage of a compound prescription is. And I never got involved. I know a lot of guys who did. It just didn't seem, it just didn't seem just for me. So when it comes to starting pharmacies, uh, the hard cost to be licensed, right, for your NPI number, which which is a medical provider number, um, is like seventy five hundred dollars in like processing fees, stuff like that. So you can pay a consultant, which is really the way you do it. So you don't have to worry about crossing the T's and dotting the I's. They're just gonna do everything for you. They ask you some of your own information, what's your location, what's the square footage, etc. They do all the paperwork, and then you just sign it. Uh, it takes a roughly six week, pro six week process and you're licensed. So for me, the good ones are between 15 and 25,000 per consultant per NPI, which means per pharmacy license, right? 
Now, a lot of pharmacies only require 100 square foot space. And if you're doing remote or drop ship or something like that, you can literally pick a location, call it in uh, um, Reno or, 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 or uh, you know, well, what I was picturing 300 storefronts in uh, New York or New Jersey, mm -hmm. I think was at that time was, might have been where you were living, either South Florida or New Jersey. And I'm picturing, I'm like, all this money, are you owning the real estate? Are you owning a storefront? No, no, I'm owning the licensing. Got it. And so what I do is, um, at, the faster we can get licensed, right, the faster I can sell them off. Now what I was doing was my actual strategies, when I sell them off, I was saying, hey guys, I really don't have that much interest in running or operating pharmacies. It's a lot of work, full-time job, and I don't know if I'm equipped for that. But what I am equipped for is knowing who wants to buy them, right? You could sell them 100, 150, $200,000 a pop. You sell them, and then I say to all those guys, hey, I'm gonna sell you this license, no problem, but I also own these companies that do A, B, and C. So our deal will be, I will sell you this license, you're gonna be the new rightful owner, but you have to utilize A, B, and C company that I own. So we're processing uh, 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 and billing and things like this for all of the patients that are running through these pharmacies I sold them. Because from my perspective, you build up in the interview, and to be fair to, to Mickey here, like in an interview you're very condensed, you're condensing years into like minutes, but you have 300 pharmacies, which I'm picturing are storefront retail spots worth half a million each. Mm -hmm. You sell them, and then you even mentioned your words, were to give some away, and then you go into a life of gambling. It just didn't, it was almost like your behavior traits didn't match up that it's the same person. And that's why there was a little doubt. So it's really hard in the pharmacy space to uh, become like a CVS, right? They're such giant conglomerates that they do so many things to essentially monopolize the market. So the retail space is really hard to be in. You could have some mom and pop shops. You're not gonna get super rich off it, uh, but you can do it. So then when it comes, you have to, so out of the 12 types of pharmacies, you have to decide which one has the least control over these conglomerates, which gives you the most opportunity for growth. So one of my pharmacies, which only cost me 15,000 a license, call it another 5,000 expenses to have. So it, $20,000 and you can own a pharmacy. Now if you do a drop, drop ship remote pharmacy, um, you can the, the, you can generate maybe, so usually we try to generate $200,000 a month, right? That's the safe place to be. Uh, so you wanna have a network of them. So usually within a network you can do easily, depending on your uh, patient acquisition, you can do a million to $5 million a month in gross revenue. And uh, the, the margins are really high to be honest. And I would say one of, if not the best version of all the pharmacies. So when you sell them, they're worth a lot. But when I was selling them, I was selling just uh, basically uh, raw licenses so nobody had to deal with it. You know, these companies came that already own networks and said, I don't want to deal with it, can you just give me one? I said, I'll sell it to you under the pretense that you also have to now hire my other companies to do the other work. It's a different life, man. I have to admit, I was skeptical, but uh, <laughs> those DMs are interesting. I told you. And I was, once you get a blue check mark, it's going to be a game over, huh? I can get a blue check now, I'm sure, but I was always kind of like, what's the point? I don't even know. I was like, I'm so new to this. I'm like, I don't even care. I'm like already like living the life yeah. of, that I chose, you know? Yeah, like what more do you need, essentially? Yeah. I could probably just apply, honestly, through my settings and I'll probably have it tomorrow. Understood. So now you can understand from my perspective, okay, this is legit. You make a lot of money with pharmacies, then you go into gambling. Now the real question is, if I'm presenting doubt, like you have a lot of money now, I could almost argue, someone could see that you maybe had, used the, had the money from the pharmacies to gamble. Sure. So it's almost like I can create more doubt. So I would love for you to maybe explain that you made money in pharmacies and you still make money gambling. Sure, so when I first like started gambling on this current gambling journey I'm on, it was for pure entertainment. I had, when I had sold all my businesses, and, and uh, I could touch on if you want, why, how I gave some away and things like that, but essentially, when I retired and I stopped being in the business world, I just had extra cash and all the time in the world. And I was like, I live in LA, and Vegas is a couple hours drive or you know, 45 minute flight. Uh, so I started coming like every week. And I've gambled my whole life. So I was just gambling for pure entertainment. But now being in Vegas, uh, living this incredible rock star lifestyle, I'm like, this is enticing, this is worth it, mm -hmm. let me keep coming back. And every time I'm coming back, I start to win more and more money. And at some point, I just, even though it was all purely for entertainment, I didn't have social media, I didn't have any of that, I can care less. Um, but I started winning so much that I said, let me really pay attention, like what's happening here? Let me fine tune it, do I really have something? Am I onto something? Do I understand something I'm not supposed to? And I started to realize I did and I do, and I just kept exploring it. And then the money I was winning in gambling became so big, and I started social media, actually at the encouragement of casino executives. Uh, during the pandemic, I was so bored in casinos. Cause you're a plant, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. How much you make marketing the casinos? Yeah, Come on, yeah, be yeah, honest yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm exactly. a million dollars a month to pretend like you're winning. Hey, look, yeah. I'm sure that happens. Do, uh, by the way, you don't have to say names, but are you aware? Does that happen? Where uh, the casinos might pay, let's say for me, and I'm like, hey guys, you can actually win money at this casino gambling. 
I don't know if it happens in brick and mortar casinos. The truth, I don't know. I do know it happens for online casinos. Yeah, that's a there's fact. Been, I'll, I'll, I don't know if you're tied to them, but there's been some exposed videos with a certain company. I'm I'm not sure, uh, okay. but R I, Rubet is the one. I, I know quite a bit about okay. Rubet and some others. I, I know some a lot of things I'm not supposed to know, and uh, yeah. I don't know if it happens in, in brick and mortar casinos. I don't yeah. know. They definitely never propositioned me. That's for sure. As he's throwing fireballs into her butthole. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a subreddit. It's like brand new sentence. I've never heard that sentence before. <laughs> Can't say ever again. That trip was Find that video, bro. We put music to the does, video. Does and any of this ever get old? Kind of a semi-serious question. Sometimes I get tired. I just yeah. want to like, be home and alone. I've, li I've lived alone like almost my whole life, so like sometimes it's nice to be alone. I saw some interesting videos on their phones of the lifestyle they live. Unfortunately, it's content that I cannot share on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably like a party in. Got it? Yep. With the music? Yep. <laughs> oh my god, you have it on video? <laughs> what the f*** am I watching? So if you do it like that, there is no connection. Which is probably why I struggled to find LLCs and a background history check on pharmacy, some type of check. Because I know your real name, so it's like I was looking it up and couldn't find anything. If you, you would have to look. Uh, Sounds like that was the purpose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Annoying YouTubers can't find me. <laughs> yeah, well, this was, I did this way before social media because it was the, it was the one, number one most sound financial advice I got from my advisors. Was one of the difficulties about being me and, and looking into if people are legit or not is there's certain levels to this game that it sounds like you've touched that I haven't reached. So there's things I'm aware of that I'm ignorant to and I think a certain way, but then you realize that they're actually in the right and they have money somewhere, but like you can't see it and you can't, it's not Googleable, exactly. which is tough because then I'm in the wrong, but there's like nothing searchable. If at the end of all of this, when you go home and you finish the wrap up, if you still feel that there's holes in my story or there's a fraud happening or anything, I'm telling you the truth, you should really, really stand for that. You should say, this is still a fraud. I've con now confronted him and confirmed. If you believe me, you believe me, great, let the world know. And if you don't, you honestly and authentically, and or like seriously, you, you should let the world know that I'm not real. One thing I learned many years ago is that how people respond to criticism usually tells you how right you were. I'm in the middle of a very frivolous lawsuit with someone who got upset, my Instagram is now under attack, and none of these fake gurus want the smoke. Mickey was the first one. Yeah, which is why when you made that uh, first video about me, uh, and when I pro and if you look at my own personal comments on my own page, I, I show you the utmost respect. I thought you did an excellent job articulating your uh, perspective and your best understanding with the information that was available to you at the time, right? But I knew that you didn't have all the information, and I, I thought that if I was in your shoes using the information you had, I thought it'd been way harsher. Uh, but I thought you were super respectful, you were unbiased, you came from a place of neutrality, purity, and honesty, and you're like. I'm not sure, make your own decision, but this is what I think. My goal isn't to be some annoying troll calling people frauds and then demanding that they prove me wrong. I think social media right now is full of frauds and fake gurus and it's good to have a lot of doubt. How Mickey responded to my video was the opposite of how all the fake gurus respond. In the couple of hours we hung out together, he was very candid and open with me. I never felt like he was hiding something and his entire friend group was super cool with me even though I made a public video partially diminishing everything their close friend did. Whether you want to believe him or not, that's up to you. I know a lot of people are still going to be skeptical, which I think is a good thing. I'm glad to see a lot of pushback starting to happen against a lot of people claiming to be rich on social media. It was super dope of Mickey to do this. I called him out and asked for receipts. He provided them. He's good. The next video needs to be us going to a remote casino and turning 5k into 200k before they recognize who he is. If this video gets 100,000 likes, Mickey, let's make it happen. Thanks for watching.